Hello everyone and welcome to our latest episode of the Pit Stop. We are in, sorry for the AC noise, we are in a Porsche Panamera 4, not the 4S, not the GTS, just the Panamera 4 and uh, it is the Gran Turismo version which is really interesting because I never thought something that looked so kind of funny would be something I actually love aesthetically. Um, this car it doesn't have all the bells and whistles, but it does have the sport, uh, you know, chrono package. Um, so you get the dual suspension setting. It's very compliant for the most part. And you also get the, uh, you know, quicker acceleration um, when you do put in the sport setting. And it is a very unique car. Let's first talk about the exterior. The butt is very interesting. It's kind of like a mix of an Italian and a Brazilian person. Um, so it's quite large, which is nice. You just make sure you wear the appropriate underwear for it. Um, but you do feel that, you know, kind of size. Sorry, we're have to turn our heads here a lot. You do feel that size when you're driving. Um, first impressions of the car when you're driving it, it is very smooth. Uh, this has the newer 8-speed PDK gearbox, which I was a little hesitant about, but after driving it, you know, Porsche really does make alien technology. I mean, their, their cars and their PDK transmission is the best. Uh, it really makes me question as to why BMW on their M5 went with the auto gearbox. Um, you know, they think it's quicker, but I just think this is a much better gearbox. It's the, the dual clutch to me has a certain level of perform performance and smoothness to the character to that no matter how good those ZF auto boxes get, they just don't always seem to match it um, at the top end. Um, seats on this car are amazing, uh, very comfortable, um, have no complaints on it. It's kind of cool because it does have a you know a ventilation system in it, uh, which is nice. And um, you know, compared to say an M3 that we've been driving a lot lately, uh, the seats are a little bit actually more comfortable I would say um, driving position on this car is great feels traditional Porsche like you sit in this and you know you're in a Porsche for sure um, steering feedback is wonderful I think it's better than you know the M3 and the M5 um, it's uh, we're about to pass somebody here which is great god I love this car uh, you know for a four this thing is zippy I mean it is very zippy it, it's pretty impressive as to how zippy it is and it's a big car I think it like compared to the M3 manual compact that we've driven a lot it's quicker off the line part of that has to do with the fact that it does have all-wheel drive and because it is Porsche and we all know Porsches are very sinister when it comes to beating people off the line because a lot of people underestimate these cars a lot so back to the steering feel the steering feel is amazing let me take it off a of sport here real quick um, you know, there are aspects so you really feel the size of the car, unfortunately. Um, this car, because of the way it's designed and shaped, for me, the unnatural aspect of the Porsche element to it is it, it has a lot of understeer sometimes. Um, and I'm not used to that in a Porsche. I really expect more kind of a neutral to rear balance, you know, bias. But the feel you get from the steering wheel is very amazing. Uh, it, it, it really connects to you in a way that, as amazing as the M3 is, for example, you're not getting that same feedback. Um, so it gives you a lot more confidence. You know, these are standard brakes. They're not the uh, carbon ceramic. Great pedal feel, great stoppage power. You don't kind of feel the mushiness that you do. You know, like I said, in the M cars and some of the other cars, even compared to an S-Class, which is, you know, probably relatively the same size. Um, and maybe, maybe a little heavier than this, I have to look at the numbers, but, you know, even in, in those cars, um, after a while, such on a hot day, like today in California right now, in, in LA, it's getting close to 90 degrees. And if you go a lot on the brakes, you just feel a lot of brake fade, unfortunately. Ergonomics on this car is amazing. I have five, digital dash display which is more than plenty I, I would have been happy with three but I get it they want it to look cool um, it looks awesome so we totally love it the new 
uh, PCM setup with the multi-screen, which is kind of similar to, you know, what you're going to see in the Audis and Lamborghinis is phenomenal. We love CarPlay. We can't live without it anymore. The integration on it is very smooth. Um, the ride comfort on this is surprising because even when you put it in the first sport setting for the suspension, it's a lot more compliant than the M3 and even in the in Sport Plus, as Porsche likes to call it, it's still very compliant. It doesn't move around a lot. It's You don't feel like your, your fillings in your teeth are about to get knocked off. Um, so overall, we're very impressed with it. Uh, there's one thing I do have to say that I do not like about the car. And hate is a strong word, but there's one thing I don't like about the car. And that, my friends, is they kind of copied Tesla for their air conditioning display uh, and, and control, and I freaking hate it. Because, like right now, I want to move the, the vent. I can't do it. I gotta basically hit the climate button, which means I gotta take my eyes off the road. Then I gotta fiddle around this little digital button. Uh, it's like a little circle knob. And I gotta move it to the left, and it's got two different options for like, you know, focused and I don't know what the other one was, but we can tell you in a second. Um, I'll tell you, it's it's focused and diffused, and I have no idea what the hell I don't know do, because I pressed them and it doesn't do nothing. Um, but, you know, you got to move this, this knob around, and it's not cool because it makes it a lot harder to get the air to blow in a certain way that I like. And uh, I like it when the air is hitting my hands and kind of bouncing off to my face. It makes me feel cooler on these hot days. So that is one thing I don't like. And maybe on the point two of this, they will get it right and just go back to a normal, manually operated, uh, you know, air control system. But um, until then, the car is great. Uh, you know, it's really funny looking. I mean, there are times in life when you just look at something and you go, God, that is kind of awkward. Like, what happened here? And this doesn't have that weird awkward look. It's kind of like being in the middle of Shibuya in in Tokyo, in, in Harajuku Street. And you're like, man, that is a crazy outfit, but wow, they look amazing. It's one of those effects, because you look at the car, the front's amazing, and it's got this humpy dumpy, you know, rear end, and then you sit in it, and it's cool. Um, I don't know if this is a car, per se, you can take onto the track, because um, it might, it might disappoint. I mean, the handling's good. It's very good. Um, I wonder if maybe, you know, maybe with some better tires. I mean, I don't know if it'll improve that much more because of the odd shape, but it's a very fun car to drive. It's kind of like you're in this funky thing that no one has seen, and you kind of feel like a like a 1950s kind of just badass hot rodder in it. Um, one plus is the rear seats have their own. Um, they have their own air conditioner, which is phenomenal. And I used to make fun of car manufacturers for making it, but after sitting in a lot of hot Volkswagen Jettas and Audis in the back seat, just any damn car in the back seat that has no AC, on hot days it is torturous because it doesn't matter how cold the front is, the rear just seems to just not get anything out of it. So I think that's one thing you should definitely spec if you get this car. Get the, the Sport Corona package, you will enjoy it. Um, and if you do get this car, uh, you know, I think the 4 is wonderful. If you have the budget to get a 4S, go for it. You're going to enjoy Dexter Power. But for a Panamera 4 Gran Turismo, this is a very cool, fun car. Um, I just, you know, I went in with an open mind and it won me over. It's not a GTS. It's not a turbo. And to be honest, I, I don't know if I'd want to buy the turbo of this car. Um, and if you do, hey, that's that's your choice. I think if you do, you'll be the most badass person in your neighborhood. But it is a very fun car. And I think the part of the reason why it's so fun is because of the, this kind of Harajuku element to it where it's just so funky and out of this world. Um, and you just enjoy driving it. It's very, I think the fact that it's very comfortable, the engine delivery is very smooth, the transmission is phenomenal. And you can drive these terrible bumpy roads in LA and it's it's kind of handling quite well. Um, it's amazing. And that doesn't take away from the fact that the mayor of Los Angeles has failed his job and is not making smooth roads. But the fact that, that, that they made the suspension that compliant is amazing on Porsche's end. So 
over over it this is a great car there's one con it's the ac system where it's not as strong as it should be and i don't like the control system but you get seat ventilation and if you want to torture your date from tinder because they were a d-bag you can put on seat heater for them and watch them sweat all night so yeah if you want to get a panamera grand Turismo 4 i say do it have fun get the bigger wheels because it aesthetically looks much better and uh, have fun terrorizing your neighborhood. And if you get a GTS model, God bless you, because I think that's the best of both worlds. And if you have a turbo, then you will... If you have a turbo and GTS model of this car, you will be the most envied person on your block. Just letting you know right now. So, that is our review of the Panamera 4 Grand Turismo. Have fun, and we'll see you guys soon.